Hi, everybody. Um, very big warm welcome to us uh, weekly session uh, on a Wednesday with Leonie. Uh, delighted to see Leonie again in her kitchen, looking all ready and prepared to uh, show us some delights again. Uh, today, she's going to show us something called tuna bites, uh, so a little snack, and uh, she's going to follow that with a chicken curry. Now, this was a request from me because I quite like eating chicken from time to time, but um, don't have any particularly interesting ways to, uh, to cook it and make it tasty. So I'm sure Lainey is gonna show us how to do that, but she's gonna start with her tuna bites. So over to you, Lainey. Hi, Tricia, welcome to the Eat Right Kitchen. Of course, also the viewers. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed watching my previous recipes and it would be lovely if some of the ladies make them to see them actually on your Facebook uh, page. That would be really nice because um, so many have now got my recipe book, which is uh, sent, well, I had loads on order last weekend, so they've all gone out. And of course, the recipe that I'm making today are in my recipe book, but they will also be in the comments below the, the YouTube video. So, uh, tuna bites. Well, what ingredients do we need? Um, I've got here a, a tin of tuna, which I've messed up in a, a little bowl. Um, when you buy tuna, I recommend you buy it from sustainable sources. There are different qualities in tuna. Tuna is a very healthy fish for you, full of omega and also uh, selenium and vitamin D, which is good for the bones. Um, the other ingredients are uh, cheese. I'm uh, using a, a low-fat cheddar cheese, but I know, Tricia, you like goat's cheese and manchego, which you can also use. It's absolutely no problem. Um, I'm using some capers, which might be quite unusual, about three tablespoons, but all the, the amounts are in the recipe below the video. I'm using garlic. I've cut it beforehand. It's really handy to cut your garlic and onions, and I know you're very keen on that, uh, Tricia, to make life easy. You buy yours ready-made. I made my, mine last night, and I put covered it with cling film in the fridge, and the whole fridge was smelling after garlic. <laughs> so I hope you keep yours in a pot, Tricia, in a glass jar. I do, and in fact, I keep the little jars as I um, use them. And, uh, and, and actually sometimes do chop up, if I've got some extras left over when I'm making my soup, I will pop them into little glass jars and they keep very well in there, in fact, in the fridge. So uh, yeah, that's a good tip. Maybe that's what I should be doing next time. So that's garlic. Now the other uh, smelly ingredient, which I cut before is onion. Uh, I used a red onion, half a red onion. Uh, I'm using two eggs, which I already took out of the scale. And then I have some almond milk, soya milk, and a little bit of black pepper. So let me just show you how simple and easy this is. The first thing you need to do is to turn your oven on, on about 220 degrees Celsius. So that's what I'll do now, because they need to go in the oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. Right, so here we are. Um, I'll just move the cloth out of the way. So this is the tuna. Now, if you have the tuna, it's very important that you make it a bit fine with a fork because often it comes in big pieces um, and it's much easier to mix if you just mash it up a little bit uh, with a fork. And basically, this is such a simple recipe. It's throwing everything in there. So a little bit, of course, in the planning and the preparation. So I'm using uh, the grated cheese. It's about 60 grams. Um, I'm going to put in the capers. You can, if you don't like capers, feel free to leave them out. It's entirely up to you. Then the onion. Put that in there. And we have some garlic, the smelly one, but makes it very, very tasty, actually. So it's very good. Um, I'm putting in here a little bit of olive oil, about two tablespoons. Then in go my eggs. Just like that. And this is the, uh, well, I used almond milk. You can use soy milk as well, but I try to avoid dairy products because they can sometimes cause... Uh, health issues. So I'm just basically mixing this all up in a bowl. Um, it already starts to look very colorful. <laughs> and if you don't want to make this into bites, you can also make them into muffins 
or into a small quiche flan, if that's uh, what you prefer. Um, this recipe is for about two people, if you would eat it in as a flan. So you can make it in a flan dish of about 20 centimeters. Now I'm just moving this out of the way. I'm getting uh, some pepper in as well. I forgot my pepper. Uh, feel free to put in salt, no problem, if that's what you want to do. I, I don't have a lot of salt, but if you have Himalayan salt, it's absolutely fine. We discussed that before. Right, so here on my muffin trays, one tip um, that I would give you if you make these, um, don't put your muffin trays just like that in the oven on a, on a rack. You put them on a, on a sort of proper baking tray because some of the uh, oil or fat from the fish or egg will go over and otherwise you'll have to clean your oven and that's not very handy. Right, so. And each little hole, this makes uh, a little bit more than uh, 12 uh, small ones, but it makes six large ones. So in each little hole, I'm going to put uh, a bit of the mixture. This is a bit uh, time consuming. It's like making little uh, mince pies, isn't it? <laughs> but it's such a quick recipe. and. Um, it's also really nice if you um, go out, if you can, when we can again, for a picnic, honey to put uh, in a lunch box. Um, you can have it for, uh, for lunch or dinner as well, if that's what you like. I can imagine using that as a filling in, um, for a quiche, as you suggest. I think that, uh, that, that sounds like a really good idea. I mean, this is obviously good for a snack, but... Um, you could make something that you could eat at lunchtime with a with a salad, um, presumably, yeah. if you put it into a pastry case. You you don't necessarily need to put it in a pastry case, um, uh, Tricia. You can just eat it on its own um, because it holds really, really well. So, um, so you just put it into the, so no pastry yeah. case, just put it into some kind of flan dish. Flan. Like, and, like what I do now, I put it just in the molds. If you have a, a silicon mold, you just put it in the mold and I'll show you in a minute uh, what the end result is. Okay. Well, that's interesting. So you could, you could yeah. actually literally um, just put it into some kind of um, yeah. the whole thing into one container and cook yeah. it and it would slice and you'd be able to eat it like that. Yeah, do you remember a couple of weeks ago we made uh, the breakfast muffins? Yes. We just put them in like that. So they'll, but I'll, I'll have made some before, so we can just, I can show you what they look like. And it's, you don't always need pastry, and often people um, have too much pastry. And if you avoid pastry, it's really good for your gut. Uh -huh. So this, this is it. This is how simple it is. And these little bites are also ideal for uh, if you have drinks, like on a tray, you serve it, and people can just have a little snack. So this goes in the oven, as I said, for about 20 to 25 minutes. Um, so that, that's how simple it is. So you can use it for lunch, uh, picnics, little drink cocktail snacks once we get back to normal again. So And it's so quick to make. Um, and we talked last week about planning and preparation, and that's what, what the key is, really. You need to grate the cheese, of course, cut the garlic, but if you have that ready, it makes things much easier. So that's the tuna bites. Uh, now, the next thing I would like to uh, show you how to make is the chicken curry. Um, you were particularly interested in that, uh, Tricia. Do you eat chicken a lot? Uh, not a huge amount, but um, I do like it. I, I just find it's quite, you know, it's quite bland meat, really. Um, so there, therefore, anything that you can suggest to make it both healthy, but also tasty, I think is, uh, is very helpful to me anyway. Yeah, well, chicken is, is very bland, but it's a very good form of uh, protein. And it's, of course, it's very lean. So uh, it hasn't got a lot of fat in there. And basically, I use it as a base. And you make chicken nice by putting herbs and spices in. And uh, that's what I'm going to show you today, how to do that. So for this recipe, um, I've used a chicken, which I've cut up about 250 grams. I've used, I use a chicken fillet. Um, and then again, garlic. So you can imagine how my fridge was smelling with another cut of garlic. 
Um, I'm using coconut oil this time to fry the chicken in. Um, I, you can use uh, extra virgin olive oil as well, but with this dish, the di temperature goes up quite high. So to be safe that it's not becoming toxic and because I'm using coconut milk too, I thought I'd use uh, coconut uh, oil. And it's all uh, hard now, of course, because it's not so, but it will melt very quickly. Then I'm using a half a red pepper full of vitamin C. Um, I myself, uh, you can use a chili pepper. I don't know, do you like chili peppers? Uh, yes, I, I do buy them and I add them into uh, soup. Uh, I don't put too much in. I don't like it to be too hot. Uh, I don't like that taste particularly, but I do think it's, it, it, it helps to lift the taste. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I am, um, I don't, I'm not such a spicy person because I do suffer from hot flushes still. And I really find if I use uh, like a pepper or chili powder, it really makes my flushes get worse. So that might be a tip for ladies who still suffer from hot flushes, not to have too spicy food. Um, now the other ingredient I use is a uh, curry powder. I'm using a mild curry powder, but again, if you want a more a hotter one, by all means use hot curry powder. I used four tablespoons, absolutely delicious. I'm using some coconut milk. It's in this pretty jar, but I won't hold it uh, because otherwise it'll come out. Then I have um, some cauliflower full of fiber and vitamin C. That's and not cauliflower, that's broccoli. It is broccoli, sorry, sorry, yes it is. <laughs> Thank you for being so alert, Tricia. <laughs> That's a, that is, okay, and then um, I use florets, so this is about 150 grams, and then I have courgettes as well. I don't know my vegetables, do I? How can I be? And then I top it off uh, with some pumpkin seeds, which I've got in here, which I've roasted just to enhance the taste, and some desiccated coconut. How, so, did, you, um, how did you roast those pumpkin seeds? Very, very simple. I use a non-stick frying pan on the lowest heat, for about five minutes till seven minutes, and I just turn them over. That's all. Yeah. Okay, so I'll start by cutting up the broccoli in little florets. Um, when you eat broccoli, do you eat the stem as well, Tricia? Um, mm, no, probably not. No. Oh, that's a shame because the stem has got the most vitamin C in it. So uh, what I do, I cut the outside of the stem off because that's quite hard and tough. And often when I cook it myself, I eat the stem raw without cooking it. Uh, for the purposes of this recipe, um, I've made one before and I've put it in there. But for this one, I'm just using the florets because it's such a shame to throw those really nutrient bits of the, of the broccoli away. That's just such a shame. Right, so I'm cutting that up and I'm also cutting up the little uh, couchette. I've used uh, half a couchette um, to get all my green vegetables in. I find if you cut uh, broccoli, it makes always so much um, little bits, doesn't it? It's, but even this, I will use and cut up. Some people just don't, but I, th I think it's such a shame. Full of fiber, this uh, vegetable. It's a, uh, do you remember at the beginning we did uh, broccoli soup and we were trying to say what uh, group of uh, vegetables this belongs to. And it was that really difficult word <laughs> that I couldn't pronounce, cruciferous vegetables. Cruciferous, yeah. yeah. I've been practicing, as you probably noticed. <laughs> Very good. Right, Very good. That's, um, that's the couchette. I'll just keep, cut the end bit off. And I cut this in little blocks. I've, re I've uh, recently been buying um, purple sprouting broccoli. Right. Which I absolutely love. My father used to grow it in our garden. We had a huge garden when I was a child full of vegetables and fruit. He just grew absolutely everything for us. And uh, he, he used to love growing purple sprouting broccoli and I absolutely love it. And that's something that, um, you know, I eat uh, the whole thing and it, it almost feels like it's doing me good as I'm eating it. Do you, um, I can remember when I, um, when I was young, I'd never seen purple sprouting broccoli. 
not in Holland, but maybe they grew it only in the UK. And I didn't see it in the shops for a long time. It's suddenly come up in the last couple of years. Mm. Is that correct? Or has it always been here? I've only seen it relatively recently, uh, but it's, it, it is just delicious. And um, mm. you know, I, I, just, I just really, really love it. And I, I, in fact, I bought some yesterday. I was uh, shopping yesterday for, for fruit and vegetables and, um, and saw uh, some. And I, I, I really do find it, it, it's quite sweet. It's not, it's not a difficult vegetable to eat. You know, how some vegetables are, are really quite challenging to eat if you don't like the taste of them. But purple sprouting broccoli is just delicious. And it's easy to prepare as well, isn't it? You five just, minutes, I steam it for five you minutes. You steam it, yeah, then you have the taste. And do you put any herbs or spices with it? Or just I don't it know, I just literally steam it. I, I steam all my vegetables. What I do is, I, if I'm cooking potatoes, I put a, a, a metal colander on top of the saucepan where I'm boiling my potatoes in the last five minutes and just put a lid on them and they steam in the heat. They steam in the water from the potatoes. So um, it, it just makes it very easy for me then to cook vegetables that way. And I've only used one saucepan. And it's a fantastic good vegetables, full of goodness. So uh, yeah. you're doing well there. Well done, Tricia. Right, let me just uh, show you around and I'll go to the cooker and just show you how I've made my curry. All right, so the, I'm just melting the coconut oil in the pan. Um, coconut oil is a really, really good fat. It's, it, although it is a saturated fat, of course, it comes from a coconut, not from an animal. Most our fats do come from animal. Um, it's very good for your heart. And also it helps to burn off fat. Uh, it reduces your hunger and helps with lowering your cholesterol. When we get our older, our cholesterol levels tend to go up. And this is a fat that you can use if you want to lower your good cholesterol. And also it's very important and very good and beneficial for your skin, your hair and your teeth. Okay. Yeah. So I'm putting in the uh, garlic first. And together with the pepper. I hope you hear it sizzling. Next thing, I don't try this very long because I find if you... Um, fry garlic for too long it burns and it's it, uh, it isn't good for the taste so in goes the chicken and i just give this a bit of a stir uh, when you buy chicken uh, trisha do you buy organic chicken or normal chicken um, I, I look for some good stuff. Yes, I often buy, do buy organic chicken and I do tend to buy chicken breasts um, like you have there. Um, I just I, I can't be fiddling around with um, things with bones in and, and it, it's just a sign of what a lazy cook I am really. But uh, I, it, it's just quicker and easier for me to buy um, the chicken breast. I know I know that there are recipes with um, with chicken thighs and things. And people say, oh, they taste, you know, they've got a better taste because uh, chicken breast is very bland. I think that's why it needs to be spiced up. Yeah, yeah chicken thighs are generally being more tasty. And, um, and I'm sure that is true, but for, for this recipe, if you want to do it quick, then uh, the chicken breast is, is perfect. And I would always recommend for people to buy organic um, because a lot, if, you offer, if you buy chicken that's not organic, there is a risk that the animals have not been nurtured, that fed the right food, and also that they are pumped up with water. Um, in Holland, where I come from, they have this sort of thing, and I think they do it in all the chicken industry, is they pump the animals up with water, so to get it more weight, so you pay more, but you, you pay actually for water, so... <laughs> It's always good to do organic. Right, so this is stir fried a bit. Uh, this normally would take about six to eight minutes. But for um, purposes of this video, um, I'm just speeding it up a little bit. So the next ingredients that uh, go in are just the, um, the curry powder, hot one or not hot one. Then my uh, cut-off vegetables, the 
process that I know now what it is, the broccoli. There we are. And you just give this a bit of a fry and put the temperature up a little bit. And you immediately get uh, color in your dish because you have the red rice, the green, the turmeric in the curry, which is very good for uh, people suffering from arthritis. And then the coconut milk. Now, coconut milk uh, is very good for weight loss and also full of antioxidants, which means that it fights the free radicals in your body. Well, many people do have a lot of, and it's also good for your immune system. Uh, so, do, and so, how do you buy the coconut um, milk? Do, do you buy that um, in uh, jars or packets? Or no, coconut milk uh, you buy in tins. And when I buy it, what often happens is the the fat goes to the top of the tin. So when you open the tin, it's really difficult to get because it's so solidified. Uh, you need to put your spoon or fork in or, or a knife to mix it just around, and then it becomes liquid. Okay. Yeah, so All right. Thank does, you. It does come in a tin, and it gives the, the, um, the dish a bit of an oriental flavor, which I really like, with particularly this dish. Um, so a bit Thai curry-ish. I was going That's to say, they use quite a lot of coconut uh, milk in Thai, uh, Thai cooking, don't they? They do, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now let, let's have a look at what it's doing here. There we are. So this is now starting to cook, cook a little bit more like a curry. I'm going to put it on the long now. And this is going to cook. For about uh, 10 to 15 minutes. So, all the juices from the chicken just go in there. But that's how simple the Thai curry is. <laughs> very, very quick. Um, any questions about it, uh, Tricia? Uh, no, I think that's all very straightforward. So, um, you know, I think I do think even I could do that very, uh, <laughs> very definitely. Well, I. I, um, when I first started my business in Wright, um, I had a customer lady who came to me and she said, um, I can't cook. Can you show me how to make an omelette? And when I heard that, I was like, what? You, I could not understand. I thought, well, if you can read, you can cook. That's yeah. sort of my philosophy. <laughs> You know, you say that, Lenny. I, I I read a, a brilliant thing. Um, it was I think it was Delia Smith, and she said she was testing out recipes, and she got a male friend of hers who did no cooking to see if he could, he could follow what her instructions. And her first instruction, or one of one of the first instructions, was separate the eggs. And he picked up the two eggs and he put them apart on the table. And she watched him and said, why have you done that? And he said, well, it says separate the eggs. Do they have to be, you know, kept apart? And she said, do you really not know what I mean by separate the eggs? So she said, I realise that when I'm writing recipes, I sometimes have to accept that people need more help than, you know, because it, to me it's an automatic thing. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm not surprised somebody couldn't make an omelette. I actually think making omelettes is quite difficult. Yeah. So, you, you know... And, and somebody like me who doesn't engage with the process of cooking you know at all really um it, it's all very well to say if you can read you can cook but it's not quite as simple as okay, that okay maybe that's a bit simple because i was thinking about your separating egg when i started cooking i would not have known what i would have to do because i would not an egg is one whole thing why would you separate it i couldn't would not be able to see the point of it but yes you make a very good point i agree with you sir maybe if you separate an egg maybe you would have to look up what it means yeah i, yeah. I think this is where video comes in i actually yeah. think that watching somebody cook on video and that's, that's why true. my television programs are so popular for cookery because once you've seen it you know physically being demonstrated it's a completely different thing and I, I think it's it's much much easier to follow something that you're watching 
um, and make notes about that, say, than to read a recipe. Uh, and I get cross with, you know, oh God, I'm going to sound really bad now, but I'm going to say it anyway. I read so many recipes these days and I haven't got an idea of, of some of the ingredients. People will say things and, and I think, well, I, I don't even know what that is. You know, I just yeah. have no idea what that is. And mm. it's all very well to say, oh, we're really sophisticated now. And we eat, and, you know, we eat from dishes all over the world. So, of course, we know what this is and that. I can't even give you an example, but I just get so cross. And there's no way I'm going to make that recipe. If I don't know what something is, I'm not going to make the recipe. I can't be doing with it. Yeah. Well, my criteria for recipes are, and I've tried to avoid that in my book, is not too many ingredients. Uh, if I see a long list of ingredients, I say, oh, that sounds complicated. A fine one to talk because the chicken curry has got a lot of ingredients, but it's basically out of pots and things yeah. like that, you know. I think that's fair enough. I think the ingredients that you put into your chicken curry are things that I recognize and understand. And mm -hmm. well, I, not the coconut milk, but I, I've seen it on the shelves in supermarkets. So I kind of mm -hmm. can get my head around that. But um, we also do these videos to encourage people to look at other foods, isn't it? Then the foods they would normally eat every day. As long as it's not outlandish and it's readily available in a good supermarket or health food store, it is approachable. So it's also, um, what, what I try to do with my recipes is to replicate what people like, but then give it a healthy um, sort of spray. <laughs> I don't know what... I, I absolutely think that's that's what this is for. So you showing us mm -hmm. coconut um, oil, using that instead. It's not derived from animals, so you know, uh, therefore, it's likely to be better for you. And using things like coconut milk. I mean, I think I think that's what I want people watching this to get out of it. That you can cook, you know, things that you've maybe cooked for a long time in slightly different way, and you can lower the calorie value because it's going to be you know, fewer calories, and you can also um, up the, 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 the physical health benefits Definitely. because it's going to add, it's going to add extra, um, you know, goodness into your, into your cooking. And I, and I, I think, think that's, yeah. that's the plus. Yeah, having said that, um, the tuna bags, I read uh, some before, and you mentioned about making food healthier, uh, and you said, okay, you can put it in a pastry, which of course you can do, and we were talking about making it to a frittata, which is without a pastry, just egg. So this is the end result of the tuna bites. Okay, yeah. Oh, you, can, you can see they really hold, hold properly. And you can just eat them like that and easy to take away as well. I had some left, so I made some bigger ones. Um, this will be my lunch for later <laughs> once yeah. we finish here. So that's, that's the tuna bite. Uh, here is the end result of the chicken curry. Now, there is a little twitch that or a little bit extra I'm going to do with this is I'm going to garnish it. Uh, first of all, with roasted pumpkin seeds. And then uh, if you want, it's completely free, but this makes it nice and crispy, is to put on some desiccated coconut. So there you have it. Now, how fabulous does this look? And it's so simple to make. And it's a chicken curry. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a very delicious chicken curry. Um, you know, really nice. So I think I might, between now and next week, um, I'll make that. And um, I might put a little bit of purple sprouting broccoli in instead, but that's allowed, isn't it? Of course, you can put really any vegetable in there that you enjoy and like. I mean, you have to be creative in cooking. And uh, yes, you follow a recipe if you can read, <laughs> I'm only joking. But um, then you, you, if you do it through your creativity, you can make it more appealing to you. So you said, oh, I prefer purple sprouting broccoli. Why not? You can put cauliflower in. What, Whatever yeah. you, you want, really. It's very versatile. Okay. Well, I'll have a go and uh, I'll see how I get on and I'll, I'll report back to you. Uh, I then. would love to see uh, your end results. Uh, yeah. I'll, take that, a, uh, I'll take a photograph and I'll put it onto Super yeah. Troopers, but uh, I definitely need interesting ways to um, to cook uh, chicken and particularly chicken breast. So I'll, I'll definitely have a go at that. It looks absolutely delicious. 
And I hope that uh, that other ladies will try it as well and maybe put uh, put their chicken curries on uh, on the Trisha Super Troopers or their tuna bites. <laughs> I'll encourage them to do just that. Um, and next next week we've got uh, tell us next week what we've got. Well, next week I thought we'll do some uh, spicy biscuits uh, because a lot of nice to have with tea and coffee instead of bis uh, biscuits out of a packet. And then a vegetarian dish. Um, I'm thinking about maybe a tofu scramble, but that might be too much. Or we can do a, just a vegetable dish like a, with sauerkraut and uh, butternut squash. But we can have a chat about that. Sounds amazing. All right. Well, we look very much look forward to that next week then, Lenny. And thank you for today. And uh, I will go and get cooking my chicken curry. <laughs> okay. And remember that uh, the recipes, of course, in, uh, in my Cook Right Forever recipe book, um, just wanted to let the viewers also know that uh, the new loads of the cooking books have arrived and they are in the post to you. So they're on their way. So thank you very much for your patience. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> and we will put links underneath this video to your website where they can buy the book if uh, yeah. they're interested in doing so. So again, thank, thank you. you very much indeed, Lenny. See you next week. And um, as I said, I'll report back on my, uh, on my endeavors with the chicken curry. <laughs> it was a real pleasure and I'm looking forward to seeing your uh, concoction. <laughs> yes. Okay, bye-bye then. Bye, bye Tricia.